Hey guys, this is Production Music Live with another tutorial and this one I'm going to show you an Ableton trick and how you can uh, capture a synth preset sound in an Ableton rack without afterwards using that actual synth. For example over here I'm using uh, the Tel version 2 and have this nice preset loaded in there and it sounds really nice and powerful and warm and I want to capture this sound as much as as detail as possible inside of an Ableton rack. I did that over here already but I'm going to do it from scratch in a minute. I have a, an Ableton rack over here consisting of a couple of simplers and then of a couple of effects as well. What is the reason for doing so? Um, sometimes you use your Ableton in live performances and you use uh, a couple of different VST plugins just for one or two sounds and they really like stack up and, and use a lot of your CPU power. And um, in this way you can make sure you're just using sampled versions of this synth uh, but still have the dynamics of changing around uh, with filters and, and effects but you don't use as much CPU power. Or also you could be interested in um, checking out demo versions of uh, popular synths or cool synths but maybe you only like one or two sounds of those synths and you don't want to buy it for like $200 or something. Um, so you, you can go ahead and just like copy or record the most important um, audios and, and stack them into an instrument rack and then use them from there. Or the third reason could be um, you are exchanging a project with a friend and you're working on it together back and forth. Not everybody has the same um, setup. So you might have a VSD plugin he doesn't have or the other way around. And um, so you're still able to make changes without having to use the freeze option and getting very limited. Well, let's go ahead. We have those midis, this midi pad. And um, it's played by the Tel. And now we are going to uh, create another track and um, use a MIDI track as well. And we are just going to put in a simpler. I'm always preloading some effects with a new MIDI track, so don't worry about that. And I'm going to put that in here and let's say a synth rack. Okay, we also need a recording track like this one over here. And we have to put it on MIDI capture, arrangement recording, put it on in and put it on resampling over here. So now this track will record what other tracks are playing. Uh, let's quickly check the master channel. Okay, there's no mastering chain active right now. So that's really, really important. We don't want to mess um, up the original sounds while recording them. And now let's put this to zero decibels. This is my tell track. And I'm also going to put all the effects now. So all the effects behind the tell, also the limiter will be put off. So we have the clean tell sound. I'm also going to uh, quickly check if we are running automations. The chorus effect, well, it's off now. The reverb effect, it's off as well. And, well, the cutoff is still active over here. So the cutoff goes up because we want to record the entire frequency spectrum. So the cutoff filter has to be up all the way, else we can play around with it later. And now um, it should be fairly loud, so I'm taking it down a bit now. Just make sure we don't clip. Okay, looking good. Um, for MIDI file reasons, I'm going to duplicate this track now. Right click duplicate. And I'm going into the MIDI and I'm going to delete some of the MIDI notes now. Just keep the C3 note. And um, because we want to record several octaves of the sound, and there's more down here, needs to go. All right. Just 
checking the spectrum where it still sounds good. I think we can go up to C5 and we can go down to C0. That's the spectrum we are going to capture and we are going to make the length of the notes 5 bars. We are not going to record more than that because I'm not planning on using it on tracks that play one single note longer than 5 bars at 120 BPM. Um, well, if we would go down with the recorded sample uh, to like this note G2, it would be a little longer because it's pitched down. And if we put it up, it would be a little shorter uh, because it's pitched up. But it should be fine till here and here, and then we are overlapping. But I'm going to show that in a minute. Uh, so anyways, we are prepared over here. Just need to make sure we play the cutoff all the way up. Now, since we are playing a single note, it's not that loud anymore and we can go up a little bit. So let's not record it louder than that and go ahead and hit a record button. Okay, so this is our recorded sample now. I'm going to call it tel pad c3 because that's the c3 um, note. And now we can go into our pre-designed synth rack MIDI track over here and just drag this one onto the simpler and call it um, C3. And um, well, we can already go in there and place the MIDI in there as well. Synth rack. Uh, so and it's it's actually the copied sound. Oh, that's interesting. It already sounds pretty much like that. But uh, we are going to do that in more detail now. Anyways, um, right clicking, I'm creating a group, and I'm opening up the group as well because I want to see this this view over here. And now let me quickly set something up and record the rest of the notes. And um, we are going to do so, making this uh, clip a lot longer. Let's take 30 bars and um, go out here and really go out 30 bars, something like this. And uh, we'll now copy. I'm setting it here. Okay. We still need C5, C4. C2. And um, Okay. So, looking good like that. And now we are just going to record this area over here and well maybe maybe it would be a good idea to leave a little bit of room between those files so okay now i'm good to go and i'm going to uh, yeah well that's prepared we can record now Okay, great. So we are finished with the recording. Now we need to edit a little bit. I'm going to go in here into this recorded track section and I'm going to make it a little bigger. And well, now I'm going to call it tall pad C5 and I'm going to work my way down from there. And now I'm going to uh, well hit Command E or Control E on Windows and cut it. Cut. Cut. And cut. So this is C5. We can hit Command J or Control J and consolidate that. And this is going to be renamed to C4. Control J. And um, this is going to be C2. Uh, 
because C3 is already there. And it's going to be C1. And it's going to be C0. Uh, zero. Okay, great. And also um, consolidate that as well. Okay, so now I have um, six files nicely cut together, sliced. So now we can go back and check out our synth rack and put in those nicely sliced samples. But first I'm going to set up a couple of things with the first of the simpler devices. For example, if we want to play our synth sounds forever and like be it like a real synth, uh, we can hit loop over here, tell it to start a little later, be a little shorter and put up the fades to have nice transitioning from the end to the start. And if we now hit the note, uh, it will play forever. But you heard the transition is still a little bit crazy. Uh, if, I, if I make the loop length a lot shorter over here, can actually see this area. So it's not completely perfect, but it loops at least, and um, I'm not going to uh, focus more on that now. We just put up the loop length again uh, to quite far away, and um, that would be fine. So that's the first looped area. I'm also going to put in the ADSR mappings into the instrument rack, so we can map the ADSR for all the recorded samples. So let me quickly map this. 600 will be the value full up and 50. I'm going to put this one to 600 milliseconds. This one is going to be full up and it's going to be at 50 again by default. Also, it would be nice to have a global volume control. So we are setting the volume control to, uh, well, minus 12. And we are going to adjust a little bit for the velocity over there as well, or give us the opportunity to do so. 55, 35% was uh, there by default. And now we can drag in the other samples because it's nicely set up now. So um, let's duplicate this uh, six times. Duplicate and uh, we'll drag in the C0, name it C0, and drag in the C1. Now, if you change the name over here, it also changes in there. If you do it the other way around, it doesn't. Uh, but you can see the faders are not correct over here. We have to take the loop the sample a bit shorter, so we make sure we can transition nicely in there. And here, um, length down a little bit as well. Um, C2, same story over here, and call that C2. C3 is already set up. C4, um, C4, needs to be shorter as well, and C5 um, shorter as well. So let's go ahead and take C5. So, nice. Now, there's one more thing we need to do. Um, we need to tell those, like, this one is recorded at C0. So we need to adjust the transposition position and put it up three octaves or put up the pitch 36. This one is one octave higher, needs to be 24. This one is below C3 for one octave, so we are putting up one octave, 12. This one is above C3, so we need to go down one octave, and this one has to go down two octaves. Because simpler devices are always playing the note C3, they think the recorded sample is at C3, so if it isn't, we need to adjust the uh, pitch. Um, and now, if we play 
those midis, all of them are playing all the time. We don't want that. So we are going in the key area over here and we are going to tell the C0 to play all notes until C0 and maybe until F0, this range. The second one will play the range from F sharp to above C1 because it's recorded at C1 and we are going to play until F1 and we are going to do that for the rest as well, F2. In other regions they will simply not play, so there will be always one sample playing and the other ones are going to be playing if we change our notes to that respective octave. And everything above C5 will be still played by this sample we recorded at C5 and have in here. So now we can go back and actually loop this area again and play it. It's very loud now, so um, one thing we could do right from the start is activate a utility from our audio effects utility and take the volume down a bit. Nice, so we have this synth sound of the tell, we have it captured. It's not completely the same, but it's fairly close and if we want to get it even closer, you can do more steps, like also record notes between those C notes, for example, F notes and stuff. You can do a lot more uh, steps in between there, but I'm happy with this for now. And I'm going to uh, make a couple of adjustments still. I'm going to group the entire instrument group, just um, the sidechain at the end. I'm going to use the equalizer, compressor, maybe, I'm not sure, but I'm going to use the filter, definitely. I'm also going to use the sidechaining compressor, definitely. And I'm going to put in a chorus as well, maybe here. And I'm going to put in a nice uh, warm uh, reverb. And that's a patch I made for the reverb and saved it. And, um, well, now we can take this whole group and group it again. So we have an instrument rack within an instrument rack now. I'm putting this, I'm opening this up, um, I'm opening this up, but uh, we can actually hide this section for now. And, um, well, now it would be cool to, uh, to uh, mark some of those knobs and map them into the instrument track so the chorus would be great um, because the chorus effects are always nice um, the reverb would be awesome as well I'm going to call that reverb and the author filter would be cool to have in there so we put it there and tell this filter cut off and also we need to be able to adjust the volume. So I'm mapping this volume, but we had it at somewhere there. And also it would be great to adjust the threshold of the con uh, compressor, the sidechain. I'm putting that in here so we can change the level of the sidechain applied. And now we can listen back in there and have our synth play and, and be able to adjust it um, more dynamically. So I'm putting this into green now and um, we are not listening to any sound because the filter is down. So I'm moving the filter up again. It's this auto filter.
but you see we have internal clipping over here so thank god we made a volume control earlier for all those simpler devices for all of them volume controlled via this macro control so we can simply take that down and see when the internal clipping over here stops that's good enough now we can take the overall gain later up again that's great and the filter frequencies. And also um, we could um, put a limiter in the end just in case for our live mode for example to never clip in live mode but this is fairly optional. You can also just put the gain down a bit. If you put up the reverb, if I adjust the sidechain threshold over here then it takes the sidechain kick information from up here um, and plugs it in and plays the ducking effect so let's um, let's put in some drums quickly and put off everything else Isn't that great? We, um, we kind of rebuilt this sound of the synth and now we can have it easy access all the time in our Ableton without actually using the VST. And we can also go ahead and just uh, name this whole thing uh, PML Synth um, Tel Pad and just save it to our user library or instrument racks. Whenever I go to instruments now and look for PML uh, synth tal pad. There it is. I can just like take a new MIDI track and just load this entire effect chain on here, and I have my instrument and I can play the notes. So this is what I wanted to show you. I think it's very useful um, for, for example, saving CPU power or recording synths you don't actually own, but you want a couple of important of sounds out of some demo versions or something, or you want to share your project file with a friend who doesn't actually have the synths you're using, and you still want him to be able to, um, to mess around with the notes and everything. So you can send it back and forth in that way and later exchange the synth again to the original one for mastering and bouncing your tracks. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our description. There's free stuff and, and we also have samples available in the description and presets and I hope to see you next time. Bye.